In the 18th century, British merchants shipped around three million people from West Africa across the Atlantic to the Americas and sold them into slavery. They made four trillion pounds from the unpaid labor alone. Portugal and Holland pioneered this slave route. Britain made a national fortune from it. Much of the Britain we know today was built with slave money. Ports, cities and canals, even the Church of England has admitted making money from the slave business. By the 19th century, a fifth of the British elite had made their fortunes from slavery, among them David Cameron's distant cousin, General Sir James Duff. The Liverpool merchants who founded what's now Barclays Bank were slave traders. In 1833, when slavery was abolished, Slave owners were paid £20 million in compensation for their loss of property. That's £2 billion today. More than 10 million people died as a direct result of the Atlantic slave trade. But the survivors got nothing. West Africa, nothing. Now 15 Caribbean states, including Jamaica, have launched the first united campaign for reparations from Britain, France and Holland. They have suggested compensation equal to the sum offered to slave owners in the 1830s, two billion pounds. They also want an apology, Don't blush. recognition of the historic atrocity. They hid in caves, my great grandmother was born in a cave to make sure that she was not born as a slave. And that is what Britain perpetuated. But the British government has refused to give either. David Cameron's first official visit to Jamaica has amplified calls on Britain to agree to reparations. Some argue that if Britain did pay, it wouldn't be the elite footing the bill but the tax-paying working classes. Others have said, this was 200 years ago, it's in the past, why should I pay now? In Jamaica, slavery was followed with a century of colonialism. Most of the land is still in the hands of Europeans. When the Brits left in 1962, 80% of the population were functionally illiterate. Male literacy remains four points below the global average. 19% of the country live in poverty. When historic crimes have generational victims, who should pay? 